Have you ever stopped to think what it would be like if, if we were to spend the majority of our time doing that? Focused on Him? Worshiping Him through our, through our words, through, our, through, through the, the spoken word of, of truth? Focused on His work and His kingdom, His love, Him? Well, I think we should spend a little time thinking about that. Because there's coming a day that that's all we'll do. That we will praise Him. We will sit at His feet. We will lay those rewards, Steve, at, at the feet of Jesus. We will... We will celebrate who He is and what He's done, and we will do it with Him in His presence. We'll spend eternity with Him. And yet sometimes we have trouble sitting through an hour worship service. Amen? Yeah. Some of y'all heard the preacher was coming back today. Y'all didn't, because you're here. <laughs> no. What would it be like? Wouldn't it be like that, just to focus and to... Instead of hearing words about the Word, we would be looking at the Word. We'd be staring Him face to face, just overwhelmed by His presence. All those questions and all those thoughts and everything that I wanted to ask Him will just fade away because I'll be in His presence. And just worshiping Him praising Him, full of joy and full of enthusiasm, full of life. We think that we're living life now, but folks, we, we don't know what life's like until we're in His presence. Hmm. See, if we, if we spend the majority of our time focused on Him and praising Him and speaking about Him and His work, it, it won't be, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is there, it won't be the absence of difficulty or challenges in our life. He never promised that to those of us that chose to walk with Him. He never said, hey, accept me as Lord and Savior and I'll take away all your troubles, all your difficulties, and all that. In fact, He says the very opposite. He says that because of your faith, you will be persecuted. You will have struggles and trials and, and difficulties and all of that. But our focus in the midst of it is on Him. And that's how we can get through the, the challenges and the trials and the difficulties that we face is by focusing on the work, the kingdom, the love of God, the Word, and the Word of God. It might, it might be like camp. Students could, in fact, a couple of weeks ago they shared with you. If you weren't here and didn't hear that service, you should go and watch it online and listen to some of those testimonies of the kids of what God did in their life the changes that he made can we celebrate the fact that six kids prayed to receive Christ as Savior and Lord and August 11th the second Sunday in August if I got my date wrong August 11th that second Sunday we're going to have a celebration service of baptism for those and then some others from previous times that have yet to been baptized maybe that's you and you say hey I've never been baptized I've trusted Christ as Savior and Lord come get in on that we, we just like to to just to run them through all right in a very spiritual special way all right? <laughs> no it's just going to be a day of celebration but it's 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 like that some of you have to think back years ago to when you went to a camp or you got away for a week and, and, and all that you did was listen to, to Christian lyrics. Yeah, I, I didn't expect that too loud there. But, but I, can, I, can, I can tell you that camp is a place in which everything, to the best of our abilities, we remove so much of the outside pressure and influence so that we can focus in on Christ and who He is and what He came for. And all of the teaching, all of the, the discussion, all of the songs, everything that happens is geared towards helping us to focus in on the Lord and His work, His kingdom, and what He needs to do in our life and what He wants us to do with our life. It's filled with people pouring in to other people through their singing through their teaching preaching through all of that 
God stirs. And you guys got to experience some evidence of that in the lives of students, that in the midst of when, when they're separated from as much as possible all of the pressures and struggles and demands of life, and they focus in on God, God has a way of stirring in their hearts. That's, that's what it would be like. We just got back from Alaska. We got to spend 10 days up there, and one of the things that our family was a part of was a youth camp up there. And, and the same dynamic happens in which everything that is done is, is removal from the pressures and the struggle as much as possible to the place of being focused on Jesus. So there becomes that intentional effort to focus on Christ, to point people to Him. Absence of distractions, limited outside influence and pressures. And through those things, we typically see those kind of results. You see kids saying, I need to recommit my life to the Lord. Well, they do that every year. Could I just encourage you a little bit? If you and I would get open and honest with God, there's some recommitment of our life that needs to happen. But we don't separate ourselves enough from the pressures and the struggles and the influence of the world to get enough alone with God to focus on Him long enough, consistently enough, to realize that we're living for self instead of Savior. But in the midst of those times of refreshing, of, of removal, and of encouragement, they focus in and folks speak life and pour life into them and God moves. Six kids come to know Christ. Fifteen, whatever it was, committing their lives. One surrendering full and sure to the ministry that God's called them to do. We saw three kids pray to receive Christ at, at, at camp in Alaska. And just an incredible time of seeing the small group leaders getting a chance to, to put their arms around those boys and just pray with them and help them through that process of coming to know Christ. It's, it's, that's when we see those things happen is when we get our focus off of the stuff and onto the Lord and our hearts are open to what He needs to do in our life and He speaks life into us and breathes into us. And change happens in people's lives. So how can we, how can we help that continue? Because I've been in enough churches and I'm two weeks removed from the Falls Creek service. Some of y'all sat in that False Creek service or we tend, to, we tend to think in terms of, well, that too shall pass and they'll get back to normal. I just, I just, the Lord convicted me this week as I was thinking about that. What if I'm part of the reason that they get back to normal? Just, what if you're part of the reason that they so quickly get back to what we want to call normal. Do we think for a moment that what you and I do on a day in and day out basis is normal for God? Or would God rather it be a Falls Creek, Alaska camp experience in our lives on an ongoing, regular, day-to-day -day basis? I'm of the persuasion based on my reading of the Word of God and what He intends for us is that He would much rather us be in a spiritual elevator and, and on, a, on a high of being close to Him and focused on Him, that that would be the new normal for us. And so, as those students and as people that have had a spiritual experience of God working in their lives come back around and have the pressures of life come at them, and you and I live in those pressures of life, then... It just seems, from our perspective, that it would be natural for us to get back to ho-hum living. And you might sit there and say, yeah, well, where are all those kids today? <laughs> I might could look around and say, well, where are all the other folks today? We're quick to point a finger at somebody else because, oh man, <laughs> you already know what's coming, right? We're quick to point a finger at somebody else so that we don't have to take the time to look at ourselves. So 
So how do we maintain that? How do we, how do we get there of a place of spending the majority of our time focusing on the Lord or allowing the Lord to be a part of every aspect of our life? Because it's really not about putting the Lord first in our life and then my family and then this and then this and then this. It's about letting the Lord be a part of every area of my life. And so, would you... How can I make better choices? How can I allow Christ and His Word to filter through every area of my life? I've got to stop and make the right choices in what it is that I listen to. I listened to Brother Steve's message last week, and I I would say four, five, six times during that message, he said, well, I was listening to the radio and heard this preacher say this, or I was listening to this song, and it ministered to me this way, and all that. Just, Just because of a relationship that's developed, that's his lifestyle listening to the Word of God being proclaimed and taught and listening to the Word through song pouring into Him. Not a perfect man, and his family would say, Amen. Oh, this. <laughs> but, but a person that you feed off of those things. They, they, they encourage you. They help you stay focused. And so, what is it that you listen to? What is it that you watch? What is it that you read? Those are the types of things. If we want to stay focused and we want to create a spiritual experience, that's really not the word I want to use. If we want to have a, a spiritual, ongoing relationship, growing, vibrant, lively, enthusiastic relationship with the Lord, you, you can't live on a 30-minute sermon on Sunday morning twice a month. Well, I'm here every week. Well, you're the minority if you're here every week. So, what do we do? We've got to, we've got to, we've got to change the things that we, and make the right choices in what we listen to and what we watch and what we read. Because what goes in will find its way out. We've got to be careful of where we go and what we do and who we hang with. We, we've got to watch those things. We've got to be careful what we say. So as I was making those notes, the ABCs came to mind. ABC apostrophe S. That's how we write that, right? The ABCs. How can I stay focused and determined to live for the Lord? How can I stay in this spiritual... Uh, attend church regularly. I mean, that's something that you need. I, I, I'm thankful that we videoed the messages. And, and I watched the last two Sundays. But I'll tell you, there's something that I recognized just in two weeks. And I was, I was in church the first Sunday. I actually got the privilege to preach in, at First Baptist Church, Soldotna, uh, Alaska, on that first Sunday. Last Sunday, we were flying and we were traveling home during, during church. But in Phoenix, I watched Sundays service and listen to to brother Steve's message but I'll tell you there's something that's missing I don't just attend church to hear the word of God hopefully I'm, I'm in a consistent time where I spend time with God daily and what actually happens at church when I gather with God's people in church is it's the overflow but too many of us have switched it around and we let the church service be the thing that fills our tank to get us through the week when really we should come with our tank full and let the overflow of what God has done in our life be expressed in our joy and our praise and our celebration of who He is when we gather together in worship. That's the part I missed, is gathering with God's people and, and not just hearing what God's doing, but able, actually being able to interact and to see that. And so attend church regularly. Yes, you need it for the teaching of God's Word because God brings leaders to us and their purpose is to to instruct and to train us in righteous things and point us in in the truth. That's what Ephesians chapter 4 speaks about. 
But you, you need church for so much more. So what do you need to do? You need to encourage people that are not around you to say, hey, we missed you. We, we missed having a chance to gather with you to worship the Lord. We, we missed an opportunity to grow in our relationship with, with one another. We missed you. Or we invite new folks. We, we encourage those new believers, attend church regularly. The B would be be involved in a small group. Get, get, get plugged in to a, to a Sunday school class or to some, a class that's going to meet during the weekdays, uh, week evenings. Be involved in a small group, a time in which you're not just sitting there looking at the back of somebody else's head or this adorable figure right up here. Just seeing if y'all are still with me. But you're gathered around in a circle and you're opening God's Word and you're, you're doing life together and how does this speak to me and what is it teaching me and how do I need to apply that in my life? Attend church. Be involved in a small group. Connect with other believers. That's, that's, a, that's a part of it. How do we keep this going? How do, we, how do we create this if we need to? And it's really interesting that the Lord had laid and ABCs on my mind because there's no formula for it. There's really not a way to say if you'll do A, B, C, and D, this stuff will happen. But there are directions in His Word of things that we need to do and people that we need to be in order to have an impact that He wants us to have. And the S is really where the Lord stirred within me these last couple of weeks. It's that we would speak words of life and encouragement into other believers. If there's something that these believers, these new believers from camp need, if it's something that a person that's made a fresh commitment to live for the Lord and to try to abandon some of the things that they have been doing and, and focus their energy on Christ, they need folks to be speaking truth and life and love and encouragement into them. That's, that's what they need. Listen, Proverbs 16, 24. It says, Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to taste and health to the body. Ephesians 4, 15 says that we ought to speak the truth in love. Let us grow in every way into Him who is the head, Jesus Christ. And on in that passage, down in verses 24 and following, it says, Therefore put away lying, but speak the truth, each one to his neighbor, because we are members of one another. Let no foul language come from you in your mouth, but only, listen, but only what is good for the building of someone up who is in need. Our words matter. Our words matter. And we are either speaking life into somebody or we are, the opposite of that is we're speaking death. We're, we're pushing them away. We're not encouraging them and putting courage into them but we're, we're just telling them they're right. They're worthless. They're, they're nobody. They can't make a difference. Whatever it may be. Our words matter. Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the taste and health to the body. One of my favorite Proverbs is 11.25. And it says, A generous man will prosper, and he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. May I be someone that with my words, I am refreshing other people. That I'm, that I'm not the person folks want to avoid. I'm the, I'm the person they want to spend a little time with. Not everything that I say may be easy to hear and just tickle their ears, but they still know that they need to hear it. I want to breathe life into them. And so that list of ABCs and those things are really things that we can do to help with our relationship with the Lord and to help us create a, a growing awareness of who He is and what He's doing and, and keeping that spiritual high, if that's the quotation that we want to use to, uh, to define our relationship with the Lord. But this speaking life 
and hope and pouring into other people, that's, that's what you and I can do for others. That's, that's, what, that's what I can do. I can only encourage you to come to church and encourage you to get involved in a small group and, and encourage you to connect with, with other believers, but I can have a little bit in those processes, but speaking, that's me. And I can be this person that lets my words be honeycomb, that are sweet, savory, and, and health to that person and helps them. Strengthen, encourage, build them up. How many of you could use some of that? If not, well, I know you just didn't want to acknowledge the question. So, We'd much rather hear folks encourage us and pour into us and build us up. And that's, that's what we need. And we're not talking about those outside the church. I believe that where we must start, we preached a message a few weeks ago that says we've got to learn to love better. Love better starts when we, and, and includes when we pour into one another. And we invest in one another. And as the world around us sees believer pouring into believer, then they can anticipate that if I become a part of that, they'll pour into me. They'll encourage me. They won't rip me apart because I've got this on my arm or this coming out of my ear or whatever it may be. They'll love on me. They'll accept me for who I am and whose I am. One of those little things that was shared with me several weeks ago that hasn't slipped away is just a, a piece of a message, really an illustration within that message. Junior Hill, a preacher evangelist from years past and faithful to the end. Um, just the part that I have was his wife would write him little notes. And they, they might just be a note that just says, man, I love your smile. It might be a note that says, your eyes are the prettiest thing I've seen. I, I, it just, just simple phrases of things. And she would tuck those away or put them in this or that so that as he was traveling or as he would come across, he would see those. And when asked why she would do that, it was really her way of breathing into or on her husband. It was her way of just encouraging him, of loving him, of, of being there for him and even though she might not physically be present all of the time because of what his, his ministry and his life. That's what we need to be. We need to be breathing life and encouragement into our families, into fellow believers, into these new believers and fresh commitments and into one another. We, we need that. And so when God puts a name on your heart, do something. When God puts somebody in your path, say something. And for the love of His Word and who He is, make sure it's something that builds them up and encourages them and, and helps them. Dylan Chase, a uh, artist, those of you that were at camp, he's the one that wrote the spoken word to the mystery, to the theme of camp. He was our um, music personality that came with us to Alaska and got a chance to meet him and, and hang with him and uh, although rap is not my variety of music to listen to all the time, it was, it was pleasant to visit with someone um, who really understood that they had an avenue to share a message of the truth of the Word of God uh, with, with students and with those that listen uh, to his style of music. But one of the neat things that I saw wasn't just an entertainer that was there to entertain and all of that, but it was somebody that was there knowing that they were given an opportunity by the Lord to not just sing praises unto Him and speak of His truth, but to sow into the lives of those kids, students that were there, and even the adults. And one of those occasions that I saw was him sitting at a picnic table out on the back patio of the campground area 
with three students that had written a rap and they wanted to perform it for the rap star and uh, they did that and he listened to it and I couldn't understand whatever eighth word that they said uh, if I'm being nice to myself and uh, but they they rhymed they did all of this their speed all of the things that that you would think are a part of that industry and that style of music uh, his words to them wasn't that your rap was awful wasn't that you don't know what you're doing his words were words of encouragement he said of all the people that have come up to me and and sung a rap for me and my ministry of about 17 years of doing this he said I'd probably put you guys in the top five of students that have the ability to rap there's an encouraging word that's that's building them up but there's other building up that happened he said but what I had to come to realize was rapping was only about 10 percent rhyming and it's 90 percent content and he said what your rap is about is something that a hundred people are better at than you are because you're talking about the way you play ball you're talking about the way you dress and you're, ra you're, you're rhyming and you're getting all of that he says but what you're writing about everybody could sing about everybody could do but he said you have the opportunity to tell a story that only you can tell and he said so when you write the rap you write the rap about what God's done and what's happened in your life because nobody can beat what's happened in your life that there's no way to top that. It's not even an effort to try to top what they've done. They can't argue with that. They can't debate that. It's what's happened to you. And he said, when I rap, he said, what I had to come to realize is I had a story to tell. And I tell every time that I speak of the work that God has done in my life and the things that he has taught me through the lessons and the things that I've learned. And so in the midst of that, this fella who just poured into them, Camp finished up on Thursday. We're at the mission house where we stayed. Friday night, there's a Facebook post. This happened on Wednesday. On Friday, there's a Facebook post by these three boys that were doing that. They had written another rap and performing it in their living room and recorded it. The message was there. Christ came through. This is what He's doing in our lives. This is what's happening for us. It's, it's a matter of taking the words of life that somebody pours into you and then applying those and doing something with it. And I saw it happen just right there in front of me and then two days later, three days later on a video that they're posting. They took heed to what was said. I believe the folks that are wanting to grow in their relationship with the Lord and striving to become all that He wants them to be will listen to the words that you and I choose to speak into them. We can't control whether, we, whether they do or not, but we're responsible to make sure that we are breathing life and encouragement into those around us. I saw it happen there. I saw it happen in the, in the small groups and the leaders as they were sharing with students and just, boring their, just bearing their life with them. I see it happen in my life in a regular basis through text and phone calls, letters and notes. early morning gatherings people that are just choosing to take the life that they have and to pour into and speak life into others so it's my prayer that God would continue to develop within me a life that is worthy to breathe into others there's several songs out today, but one is Holy Spirit, Breathe on Us. I'm not even sure what the title is. I make up my own titles and my own words sometimes. But, but that's what I'm asking. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Father, would you breathe fresh in me on a daily, regular basis so that I would have life that I could breathe into others? And encourage them in their walk and relationship with the Lord. And help them. I could comfort and encourage and give truth and life to them. Keep me fresh so that I can refresh others. I wonder. I wonder if you would ask the Lord to do that in your life. Not because he's doing it in the life of the pastor. But because that's what his word tells us to do. 
His word tells us to speak words that build others up. His word tells us to, to use words that are pleasant as honeycomb, sweet to the taste and healing to the body. He tells us to not let anything come out of our mouth that tears people down, but only that which builds them up and helps those that are in need. Be intentional with the life God's given you. Be intentional with the words. Invest in, build up, breathe on others the words of life. So if you're here and you're a believer today, may that be your commitment to Him as a result of being here today. But if you're here and you've never trusted Him as Savior and Lord, would you choose Him today? Would you choose to follow after Him and surrender your life to Him? When you do that, one of the promises in His Word is you'll spend your forever with Him. And you'll be a part of that group that praises His name forever. I invite you, if you've never made that decision, let Him change your life. Be like Trenton or Tear, two of the boys that prayed to receive Christ in Alaska. I can't think of the other one's name. I just know that he walked around on crutches all week. His name just won't come to me. Won't you come join the family of God if you haven't? Let's stand together. Father, this morning, we pray that you use this time to just move us to action. That we would use our words, our influence, our lives, and invest them in other believers so that we could be strong and faithful to the finish. Use these moments. Have your way in Christ's name. Amen.